So in the last video, I described some, some of the basic properties that addition and multiplication have. I want to go into more talking about multiplication in ZM and when you have multiplicative inverses in ZM. So an element, so it could be an element in ZN or it could just be in an arbitrary ring. So uh, an element um, a in a ring R is said to be invertible so if there exists an element B inside R with a times b is 1, and also b times a equals 1 if you're not commutative. Uh, I'd leave that one out in your mind. So what we're looking for is something like a, a reciprocal, something that will multiply against a to give you 1. Now, if a has an inverse, We also say A is a unit of R. Now, so there's some kind of orthogonal notion uh, about zero divisors. So an element. A inside a ring R is a zero divisor if first off first A has to be non-zero and there has to exist an element B inside the ring So not zero, and a times b has to be equal to zero. So what you're really doing is you're giving a factorization for zero. It has to be a non-trivial factorization in, in that neither of these two terms are allowed to be zero. And now that we have a factorization, we use the same terminology that we had before. We say that a and b are both divisors of zero, that is, they're zero divisors. Now, I pointed out this before. Um, in Z6, both the congruence class of 2 and the congruence class of 3, and I guess also the congruence class of 4, are zero divisors. Why is that? It's because they're all non-zero, and if you take 2 and multiply it by 3, you're going to get the congruence class of 6, or the congruence class of 0. And also if you take 4, what is 4 times, what do I want here? Um, 4 times, I'm trying to think of what I can multiply against 4 to give me 0. I think there's something. So if I take 4 and multiply it by itself, I get 16. 16 is congruent to 2. No, 16 is congruent to 4. Should I start again or should I keep trying with this? What's my uh, multiplication table for 4? Oh, it's 4 times 3. Oh, right, of course, 4 times 3. There we go. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 is 0. Luckily, I've got the multiplication tables here to cheat.
So, a commutative ring is called a field. So this is the definition of a field. If every non-zero element is a unit, that is to say it's invertible. So what are your examples of fields? You know a lot of these from linear algebra. Your complex numbers are fields. They're commutative rings with this additional property that everything but zero has a reciprocal, has a multiplicative inverse. Okay, now I said that somehow zero divisors and uh, multiplicative inverses are orthogonal. What we're going to find is that they are that anything that is uh, a zero divisor. Uh, is not invertible and vice versa. But I don't want to give you the impression that every element has to be either a zero divisor or something that's invertible. Right? So the example you want to keep in your mind is the polynomial ring. So, so in the polynomials, you know that if you have a, a polynomial and you multiply it against a po another polynomial, the degrees will add. That means that if you take two polynomials and you multiply them, you never get zero back out unless if one of those polynomials was zero in the first case because the degrees are only going to increase. It also tells you that you can't get one back out. You can't take two polynomials and multiply them to get one unless they both had degree zero in the first place. That is, the only way to have an inverse as a polynomial is to be a constant polynomial and a non-zero constant polynomial. Right? Um, because if you have one over something, one, of, one over a, a, a polynomial that's not constant, is not a polynomial. It's, it's outside of your ring of polynomials. So you have an element. It doesn't have to be zero divisor. It doesn't have to be invertible. Now, in the case of congruence classes modulo n, these do happen to be, uh, you do happen to fall into one class or the other. So I'm going to write down a theorem now which tells you exactly when an element in Zn has an inverse. And you'll see that 2, 3, and 4 don't fall under, under that category. So the theorem is a congruence class A in Zn is invertible, is a unit. if and only if the greatest common divisor of A and N is 1. So this ties into all that we've been doing with the Euclidean algorithm. So how do we prove this? Recall that the GCD of A and N is equal to 1 if and only if um, there is some B and some C to make a linear combination of these guys giving 1 for b and c integers. So we know the theorem goes this way at least, right? That if you have a GCD giving 1, then there's some linear combination giving you 1. The other way around is coming from the proof that says that the GCD is the smallest such linear combination, right? And so if we have a combination giving 1, there's no smaller, linear com no smaller uh, positive linear combination. So if your linear combination gives you 1, then you must have GCD1. So A and N must have GCD1. Okay, so we know that these two are equivalent. 
And now what does this tell us about whether something is invertible? Well, I think you can see how we're going to get uh, a times something equal 1. Let's shuffle this. So b a minus 1 is equal to c times n. I'm going to skip a step which says n divides this thing and just go straight to our, our modular arithmetic. Uh, we know that b times a is congruent to 1 mod n. And therefore, a is a unit. So if you want to go in the reverse direction, sorry, the congruence class of a is a unit. And you might want to see the, the formula written out. b times the congruence class of b times the congruence class of a is b times a, which we know is the congruence class of 1. For the converse, we can follow this argument backwards. If There exists an integer b with b times a, giving me congruence class for 1, then b times a is congruent to 1 on n, thus there is some with um, b a minus 1 is equal to c times n. Therefore, GCD of a and n is 1. From that discussion we had before, rearrange this c linear combination giving 1, and we know that the GCD is the smallest such linear combination. It has to be just 1. So this characterizes all invertible elements. All invertible elements in Zn are just those with GCD1 with n. So this leads me to the next theorem that we have, which tells us when Zn is a field, so when all of its non-zero elements are invertible. So I'm going to fix n as an integer greater than or equal to 2, just so I don't have to deal with some messy cases about trivial rings. Uh, the following statements are equivalent. is that for all non-zero equivalence classes in Zn, a, the equivalence class of A is uh, a unit. In other words, invertible. This is equivalent to, so, so I'm not telling you that these are all invertible for everything in Zn. I'm saying that if they're all invertible, then we know that there are no zero divisors. In Zn. And if we know that there are no zero divisors, that's equivalent to um, the integer n is prime. So this is our characterization of when 
uh, Zn is a field. It's a field precisely when everything's invertible. It's precisely when that integer n is a prime. So I'm going to pause the video now because I think I might go along with this proof. All right. So to prove a theorem like this, where we have three statements which we're claiming are equivalent, what we have to do is, well, a bunch of things. We could show that A and B are equivalent, and B and C are equivalent, and that would show that A and C are also equivalent. Or we could do a chain, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to prove A implies B, B implies C, and C implies A. And that's enough to show that each one of these statements is equivalent to any other. So we show A implies B implies C, and that implies A. So for the case, A implies B, assume all non-zero elements in Zn are invertible. So I'm going to take for contradiction A zero divisor. So we're going to take these two congruence classes with, um, I'm going to assume that they're not zero, and uh, that a times b is zero. I could also ignore this, not do it for contradiction, assume that they multiply to zero and then prove that one of them is going to be zero. That's really where the contradiction is going to come from. Okay, so if a times b is equal to zero, um, as a is not equal to zero, it is a unit. And so what does that tell us? That tells us we can multiply a inverse by a to get to the identity. And so the equivalence class of B is really the equivalence class of A inverse times A times B. This here is the identity of the identity times B is B. Now, grouping it this way, using our associativity to group it that way, we get A inverse times something which we assume is zero, and this is, again, going to give us zero. Zero times anything is zero. And so we've shown B is zero. So this contradicts our choice of B. Thus, there are no zero divisors. That in. Right. And I was assuming. Okay. So we showed A implies B. Next I'm going to do B implies C. Rather, instead of doing B implies C, We're going to show the contrapositive of B plus C. That is, we show 
not C implies not B. So what was C again? C said that N had to be prime. So I'm going to assume N is not prime. and assume that N is composite. And now I have to prove um, not that, that there are no zero divisors, that the, but that there are some zero divisors inside Zn. So I'm assuming that n is composite. So I can write n as a times b, where now since a and b are not allowed to be 1 or n, because I'm choosing a proper factorization, I can assume that, um, say, 2 is less than or equal to a, so through n, oh, strictly less than n, and 2 is less than or equal to b, strictly less than n. So what I want to say now is that I want to observe that the congruence class of a is not equal to 0, nor is the congruence class of b. Why is that? I'm in between. Uh, I'm strictly less than n, and I'm greater than or equal to 0. And so these are unique representatives for the equivalence classes. So the only way to be the equivalence class of 0 is for a to actually be equal to 0, and it's not. It's strictly bigger than 2. And the same thing with b. So these are non-zero elements. And also, when you multiply them together, you get a times b. It's a factorization of n. This is n, which is 0. Right? We can subtract n and still be in the same equivalence class. So there it is. We've shown, we've shown not b. We've shown that there are 0 divisors. Thus, not c. There are zero divisors in Zn. Okay, that, that was the proof of B implies C. And it follows because the contrapositive is logically equivalent to the original implication. Now, the last step. The last case is C implies A. To show that these are all equivalent to each other, you have to come around the horn and show that C and C implies A. So, what did C say? C said that N is prime. So I'm going to assume what C says. I'm going to assume that N is prime. And now I need to show that every non-zero element is invertible. So take a, a congruence class and take it to be non-zero, a non-zero element in Zn. As n is prime, and a Groot's class of A is not equal to zero, we see what? We see that, um, first off, N does not divide A, because I know this, this is not the congruence class of zero. And I also know that if N does not divide A, then the GCD, so we see that N does not divide A, and therefore, the GCD of A and N is just going to be 1. Right? We're going to take the minimum of the exponents we see in the prime factorizations here. There's only one prime here, N is prime, and it doesn't show up in A. Which means the minimum of the exponents, all the exponents are going to be 0. We're just going to get 1 as our GCD. Now we get to invoke our previous theorem.
by the previous theorem. GCD of A and N being 1 implies the congruence class of A is a unit. It's invertible in ZN. As A was arbitrary. arbitrary non-zero congruence class, we have shown that, not, that all non-zero non equivalence classes in Zn are invertible. We've shown A. And so we've proven the equivalence of all three of those statements. And so this is a really nice characterization. We know exactly what the fields are out of the whole list of rings Zn. It's a field exactly when n is prime.